In this video guys, we're gonna look at getting downside exposure when you only have a long only account. What are the ways you can do this? Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so many people only have a long only account, whether it's in perhaps some sort of tax wrapper where you can only buy stuff, or for whatever reason, we don't go in details, but some people only have access to a long only account. They can only buy stuff, they can't use margin. So these people, these traders, still want access to downside opportunities or still want to make money in the downside. So how can you do it? Like, well, if I can't short, how can I make money? Well, actually, there's a few ways that you can do this. And I'll give you a list of some of them. Some of the ones that aren't quite as, as correlated to the downside, but can be a way to get some downside exposure. And others, which are just purely correlated. And I'll tell you which one's my favorite at the end. So the first one, maybe less obvious, is long volatility. So volatility, when downside movement happens, volatility spikes up because everybody is looking to buy insurance in the form of put options. That spikes up the volatility. Things like the VIX, or things like the ETF, VIX ETF VXX, are ways of getting downside exposure. So the market goes into free fall. It's not immediately correlated, but generally speaking, if we get some panic to the downside, VIX will spike massively. Now, you have to go back and look at the charts and see how the VIX moves because it tends to kind of spike aggressively and then just tail off and tail off and tail off or it's a real reversion to the mean type trade but if you're expecting a bit of a panic move for the downside then very often a long VIX play is a better risk reward ratio than a short play on the actual indices. The other one is to buy a put option. If you've got access to buying, you can buy stuff, you can buy options, then buying a put option like a, a SPY put, which is the S&P 500 uh, ETF put, or a FTSE put, or any others, QQQs, or maybe you pick some individual stocks you think are gonna get hit the hardest, you will make money. Again, if there's an acceleration and downside move, the volatility will go up, the put option will increase in value, and of course, if the price of the asset decreases in value, the put option will increase in value as well. You've got to time that as well with the time to expire, there's a few little knobs and dials to adjust and tweak to choose the right one for that, but ultimately that's a good risk reward ratio as well. If you pick the right one, you can get many, many multiples times your your risk on that. And the good thing about buying an option is you can only lose your investments. If you say you spend a thousand bucks on the option, it can only go to zero. And if I could go to zero and might come off zero again before expiry. So there's some advantages with put options. I've done kind of more detailed videos talking about how to use and tweak options to suit what you're trying to achieve. Third thing guys, probably my favorite for just pure exposure is to buy an inverse ETF. So something there's, there's so many out there, you can have inverse ETFs on the NASDAQ, inverse ETFs on the Russell, inverse ETFs on the SPY. You know, these are basically mirroring the move of the market in an inverse way. So if the market falls 1% on the day, that ETF will rally 1% on the day. And you can even go a little bit more juiced on that and have a triple leverage or double leverage ETF, double double short SPY ETF, SDS for example, the market falls by 1%, that ETF will rise by 2%. Now, you've got to be careful with these triple or double leverage and inverses because they're not really vehicles for long-term investing because overnight they're reset and they don't quite mirror the performance, but intraday they're pretty good. Intraday, you know, if you're thinking, okay, this thing's gonna just tank through the floor, I want to get some downside exposure. I've got a long only account. You could be buying these uh, ETFs, but being mindful that if you're using triple leverage and double leverage, double edged sword, you make twice as much, but you lose twice as much as well. But these are good vehicles because they do mirror intraday at least for you know most of the time uh, the, the the move on the market. So it's a good way of getting exposure. Other things to think about that aren't quite getting downside exposure, but will probably benefit from downside moves, are buying defensive stocks. So like Coca-Cola, like Johnson & Johnson, like these bellwether kind of stocks that just chug along, they do all right regardless. People are buying Coke all the time. People are buying uh, Johnson & Johnson products. Uh, you know the score, guys. If you wanna go out and check out so putting defensive stocks into Google, or whatever, you probably get a list of them and just see the charts. Now, are they immune from a severe down move? No, of course not. You know, we look at recent moves and we see all stocks getting hammered. Um, but, you know, it's something to consider. Now, one thing that's very topical, guys, is that, um, especially with the coronavirus, as when I'm filming this now, we're kind of in the thick of it. We're coming maybe, maybe to the tail end of it, but who knows? I've got a crystal ball to see where this goes. But 
A lot of stocks that are benefiting from home working, like Zoom, like Peloton, like these kind of stocks that benefit from people being stuck inside, they have become the new defensive stocks. So, and I guess it's very topical depending on the situation we're in, and the situation we're in is, is exactly that. But these are actually finding these are benefiting even more when we get down moves in the market because down moves in the market at the moment are driven by the fear of the virus spreading, etc. So these defensive, these home based stocks are getting more of a bid. And so, you know, whilst this is a good place to start and say I'm going to buy defensive stocks, you could say, well, what's the theme? of the market move at the moment. Why is the market declining at the moment? Is it credit? Is it this? Is it a virus? Is it this is that? And then thinking, well, let's have a scan through and see which stocks are doing well in this environment. Yes, it might not be your standard defensive stocks like Coca-Cola and Johnson & Johnson, it might be others, but again, they may find a good aggressive bid when the rest of the market is getting tanked. So whilst it's not a direct uh, downside play, if you like, it's a kind of neutralish one that might benefit more if the market moves low. And again, you just buy those as a stock. The other thing is buy safe havens. Uh, this is my least favorite because the correlation between these is hardly there anymore. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. That's why I'm really kind of loath to put it on there, but I want to add it as an option because it is an option if the correlation comes back. Right at the moment, guys, you know, when we saw a big drive lower in the markets, gold pretty much didn't do a lot. Uh, and people could argue as well that Bitcoin's a bit of a safe haven now. Up to you to decide whether that's correct or not. Again, do your own research, look at the chart, see the proof is in the pudding. You know, if the market is driving hard lower and gold is spiking, that's probably where the safe haven is. If Bitcoin is spiking and you can get exposure to that now, bearing in mind, you probably can't buy that in a, an actual, unless the ETF comes out at some point in time in the future, which you could do, you can't buy that in a stock trend account, you actually go out and buy a Bitcoin. So that's really down my list of, of personal preference. I know you crypto guys are going to be shouting and ranting in the comments about that. But if we're just talking about kind of from a trading uh, standard exposure to the downside perspective, then these are probably your best bet. These are some things to consider if you're familiar with the way they work and if they're actually, the correlation is there at the moment when you're trying to get that downside exposure. So there's some, some ways guys of getting downside exposure if you've got a long only account. Like I say, my favorite is the inverse ETFs because there's just so many of them to choose from. Some are super liquid, some are not that liquid, but there's loads of them you can get. Really drill in as well into a specific sector maybe, specific asset, specific market. You can, uh, you, there's just so many things you can do with them. So they're probably my favorite to be able to fine tune that downside exposure if you can only buy stock. Take care, keep the risk management. I'll see you next one. Bye bye.